this video, I will demonstrate how to use the templated machine learning solution of the AI and analytics engine to predict the possibility of customer churn for subscription-based business, such as Amazon Prime or a subscription to Office 365, etc. I will demonstrate the following, a sample use case for customer churn of a telco company, how to create a customer churn prediction app on the AI and analytics engine, and how to generate predictions using the prepared app. We begin by talking about the use case, which is customer churn prediction in a telco company. So, assume you work in the sales department of a mobile telecommunications service provider. As part of your task, you are required to maintain a customer retention program. In that program, you generate a weekly report of customers who are likely to churn soon, and then, based on various factors, such as the customer lifetime value, budgets, current competitor offers, etc., you select customers who would be targeted for retention efforts. The data that is available to you includes the subscription start dates and churn dates of customers, their past events slash activity with timestamps, and their demographics. The engine customer churn template will use these datasets to build an application that identifies customers that are likely to churn. It will process these datasets to generate churn status of the customers and any patterns that can possibly be used to predict their churn status using a machine learning model. As you can see, I've already uploaded a few datasets that we will require for the template. Before I continue to show the template build, I will present them to facilitate a better understanding of the use case. To see the datasets, we go to the datasets listing here we can see what I've uploaded. We start with the subscriptions dataset, we click on preview, and we can see the first thousand rows of the dataset. This dataset contains the past and current customer subscription start dates and churn dates. If a customer is active, the churn date will be empty. So for example, customer ID number one is active. This customer has no churn date. Next, we will check out the customer service requests. We go to the preview and we see the following. This dataset contains call center records. Each record represents a service request over the phone made by the customer and the time that this request was made. The columns include the details of the service call types, the call outcomes, the call wait times, and the call duration. Next, we'll go and check out the billing dataset. Again, we click on preview, and here we see the following. The dataset contains the billing records of the customers. Each statement contains a recurrent billing amount, the cost of value added services, additional usage amount, roaming usage charges, and total amount paid by each customer along with corresponding dates when the payments are made. You can see all of the following here. Lastly, we'll check out the demographics dataset. It is a small dataset. Basically, for each customer ID, we retain the date of birth and the gender. So using these four datasets, we can now proceed and create our template. We go back from here to the overview. And in the overview, we'll select Use Template. We then proceed to select the required template. In our case, it is the customer churn prediction. We can read the overview of the template. We see that it supports two use cases, and our use case would be the first one, which is predict if my customers will terminate their ongoing paid subscription. We select use this template. We can give the app name a custom name or go with the default. I will go with the default and create the app. In the template view, we can see on the left pane the stage we're at. On the bottom right, we can proceed to the next step, or we can exit at any stage and resume later. Either way, the selections that are made are saved. So, to help us select the right option, we can click and get a preview of the required datasets. For example, we are told here that in the next step, we'll be asked to supply the following datasets transactions and customer information. And in this case, we are supposed to supply the subscription start and churn date, one or more event logs, 
and customer information, which is optional. In our case, as I previously said, we're interested in predicting whether customers will terminate their ongoing paid subscription. So indeed, we select the first option and proceed. Now we need to start adding data. The first data would be the subscription start and churn date. We get a description of the requirements here. We can see what we are supposed to upload. We click on the add data set where we can either import a new data set or we can use recently imported data set on the platform. Since I've already uploaded the subscription data set, I'll choose it. We can see a preview of the data set. We can then go and view the actual data set, but we don't need to do that. And we can select it. And now we can continue. Next, we need to map the columns of the data set to these following definitions. We need to know the unique identifier for every customer. It would be the customer ID column. We need to know when the customer started their sus subscription plan. That would be the registration date. And lastly, we need to know when customers have churned. This will be the churn date and we can save and continue. Next, we need to add the event logs. We have two types of event logs, as we said. We have the billing data set and we have the service requests. We can see the data requirements. An event, event logs data set requires the customer ID and the event time. That is all. So let's begin by adding the customer service requests. As usual, we can see the preview of the data set. We select it. Now, the first thing we have to do is provide the label for the event type. When we have multiple events and multiple events data sets, we need some way to distinguish between them with respect to the customer with the column names we're creating. So here we have an example of that. So this data set would be service requests. And again, we map the columns. So we map the customer ID to the unique identifier of every customer. And we need to map the timestamp column to the timestamp column. And that is all. We now add another data set. We want to add the billing. Again, we see the preview. We select it. We'll provide the label and we'll call it statements. And then we map the customer ID and we map the billing date. And then we can proceed to the customer information if we have any. Save and continue. The last stage of adding data would be to add customer information. As it says here, this step is optional, but it's recommended because adding more data about the customers might lead to better model quality later on. We can see the data requirements and an example of a customer's demographics data set, but basically we only need to supply a customer ID column and a few more attributes, one or more. We add a data set, we select our customer demographics, we see that we have the customer ID and as explained before, date of birth and gender, we select it. And we only need to map the customer ID. And then we can proceed to the next stage, which would be defining the churn period. Then we can proceed to the next stage, which would be defining the churn period. What does it mean to define the churn period? So in order to retain customers that are going to leave the business, a business needs an upfront warning. After all, if you learn today that an ex existing customer of yours is actually going to terminate their subscription tomorrow, you might not have enough time to apply any retention actions. So in the churn period definition stage, we define three periods, the too late, about time, and safe. The first one, the too late period, would be a period where it is too late for your business to retain a customer. This period starts from the prediction date until the time specified by you. For example, in our case, we assume that the business cannot retain any customer that is going to churn within the first three weeks after the prediction date. So we will set this as 21 days. The next time period, the about time, is our sweet spot for customer retention. These are the customers who would like to actually apply retention actions for the reason is that we have a long enough warning and we have enough time to handle them. So any customer who is predicted to churn 
in a period whose length would be 21 days after 21 days from the prediction date, these customers we would like to handle. So we specify this time period. Lastly, anyone who is predicted to churn beyond both periods uh, is deemed safe for now, because first of all, we have other customers who are predicted to churn earlier, so they are more urgent cases. So no need to handle these customers. And second of all, the prediction's accuracy tends to drop the farther the horizon of the prediction is. So in general, it is harder to predict what a customer would do far in the future, and in this case, far in the future would be after 42 days, based only on data that you have today. Once we define the churn period, we proceed to defining the contributing factors. So, what are the contributing factors? As written here, these are the factors that will influence the likelihood of a customer churning. These factors are going to be generated from the data sets given in the previous steps. For example, we're going to generate features from the customer service requests, and we're going to generate features from the billing data set, and we're going to generate features from the customer demographics. What kind of features are we going to generate? We can see inside this section. We see that we are going to generate the number of days between successive service requests. The number of days since the last service request relative to the date of prediction. And we're going to create various statistics of the following columns, wait time in minutes and call duration in minutes. What do we mean by generating various statistics? We see that we're going to generate these statistics over rolling time periods which by default are set as these three time periods, which are the most recent thir uh, 30 days, a 30 day range that ends 30 days ago, and a 30 day range that ends 60 days ago. And we can see it in the following illustration where we see the prediction date, we see that we have a 60 day gap, and we're going to calculate the statistics over the, feature, over the selected features during this 30 day period. What kind of features are we going to generate? What do we mean by statistics? You can see further explanation if you go to view guide. And here you see that we have a selected column. We have a selected rolling time period. We can see that we're going to calculate the average, minimum, maximum, standard deviation, etc. over this rolling time period. And you can see more explanations if you use this view guide here. We do a similar thing to the statements. Again, we compute the number of days between successive statements, the number of days since the last statement, relative to the date of prediction, and we calculate the statistics over the following columns. The current amount, value added service amount, additional usage, roaming usage, and total amount. And again, these are going to be calculated over the following rolling time periods. Lastly, we're going to generate features using the date of birth and the gender. We can simplify it a bit for our business use case. We can create statistics over uh, the most recent 60 days. And we can continue to the next stage. In this final stage, we're going to specify how we're going to build a predictive model. We can either keep going automatically and just find and train the top first algorithm, we can select to train multiple algorithms, but in this case we're going to train only one. We can specify constraints on the training, for example, we could ask the platform to train several algorithms, but all of them must have an estimated training time which is less than 30 minutes. We can also manually select an algorithm to train, for example, we can select the XGBoost algorithm, we can change advanced configuration parameters, we can change hyperparameters values or select a different training configuration. However, for simplicity, we'll just keep going with the default selection where the platform itself is going to select one best model for this problem type. We click on start building and we now move to the app summary page. In this app summary page, we can see several details. We can see the app setup, we can see the input data sets. For example, these are our four input data sets. Once the data preparation is going to be ready, we'll be able to view the data preparation. 
and we also see what we are predicting as we defined the three periods too late if customer churn within the first 21 days about time if they are going to churn in the following 21 day period and customers are going to be safe because they are expected to churn after 40 day, 42 days for the prediction date the app is running and these following steps can be done in the background you can go and rest or do something else and get back to the platform once the training finishes Now that the app finished, we have a model which is ready to make predictions. We can proceed to make them, but before we do that, let us go over additional information. For example, we can see the exact details of the app setup. In these details, we can see the entire flow from the input datasets and up until to the evaluation report of the model. We can see that we have a flow for each dataset. For example, if we look at the customer service requests, we can examine the recipe that applied various actions that transformed the dataset to make this dataset machine learning ready. We see that we have generated various aggregated statistics over the rolling time periods we specified. We see that we have generated many new columns in this preview. In a similar manner, we have generated additional features from the billing, all the demographics, and in the end, we concatenated all of them to generate our training dataset. We can see exactly these actions that we've done to create the training dataset. We can also see that in the training dataset, we have the churn status as a label for training. Well, we have these three periods, such as safe, about time, and too late. So we have a data set which is ready for training. We use a random splitter, which basically separates the data into two time periods. We have the last 30 days, which are used as the test portion, and the rest of the data is used for training. We train the model and we evaluated it, and we can now go and examine the evaluation report of our trained model. After we finish going over the data preparation, we can go and examine the trained model before we actually make predictions. To examine the train model, we can either click on the model here, or we can go to the Models tab, where we're going to see the model leaderboard, which will show us all of the existing models. We have a single one in this case, which was selected for training by the platform, because it was estimated that this model would give the best performance given the datasets that we had. We see that this model gets a prediction quality of approximately 74%, Prediction quality is actually the macro average, average F1 score. You can click here to know more about this metric. To evaluate the model itself, you can go into the model page where you can see a summary containing the training data set, containing the exact configuration of the model, which you can see here. We'll also get a verbal explanation of what the model is doing, which in this case, it's solving a multi-class classification problem based on labels given in the churn status column. The training used the following 49 columns over the following training data set. We can see again the performance here and go into further details, which we'll not do in this movie. We can see the feature importances of the model. This is, means basically which were the features who impact the prediction likelihood the most. We can also see prediction explanations. So per a specific given set of features, we can see what was the marginal contribution of each feature to that prediction. And we can even issue predictions through this menu. However, let's assume that we have evaluated the model and that the model performance is satisfactory. And in this case, we now want to proceed with the predictions. So we'll go back to the app summary page and for this page, we can now click on Make Prediction and proceed with the predictions. So, in the next step, we're going to see how to make a prediction using the model that we've already trained. 
To make a prediction, we'll need to take the input data set or the existing, existing data and pass it through a pipeline that will apply all of the transformations that we've already done and then apply predictions using the existing model over these transformed features. Luckily, we can do it automatically using our make prediction pipeline. So we have two options. We can either make a one-off prediction or we can schedule periodic predictions. We'll choose the one-off prediction since it is a simpler method and it will help us test our model quickly to generate some predictions. In this menu here, we can either proceed forward or discard at any stage. We begin by selecting a model and since we have only one model, we'll just proceed. At the second sta stage, we need to define what is going to be the prediction input. We have two options. We can either use data that has already been upload, uploaded to the platform. So for example, our data spans from the 1st of March, 2022, until the 21st of March, 2023. So if we use the data that we already have, we're going to predict the likelihood for churn for users who were active as of the 21st of March, 2023. Or we could bring our own data, maybe with different users, maybe for different dates, but we do it by selecting this option and then we need to upload manually all of the new data sets. However, as I said, for simplicity, we'll just keep going with the data that we already have on the platform. The third and, op and optional stage would be to define an output destination. We can export the predictions either to a table in some database or we can export them back onto the platform. In any case, we can do either one of these stages at a, later, at a later time. So we'll not do it right now. We'll just proceed with the prediction. Once we proceed with the prediction, we see the following view, which is going to be the prediction summary. On this page, we can see the prediction output. We see when it was created. Once it's going to finish, we will see the output here. We see the snapshot da date and we see the current status. Also, once it finishes, we'll be able to apply actions such as downloading the output, output or exporting it either to the database or to the platform. We can also see configuration details and we can also see in this screen the input sources. We see that they are going through a data transformer to create the features that are going to be used for prediction. These features are fed into our predictor, which uses the model to create the prediction. Now we need to wait for the prediction to complete. While we're waiting, I can also say that you can go back to your app and in the app you're going to see the prediction summary and you can see the some of the details that I've mentioned earlier here. In any case, to see the full details, we clicked on this, on this point here and we're back into our menu. Now we see that the prediction is ready. We can either download it or I can export it to a, as a data set. We can export it as a data set in our project, or we can export as an output table to a database. In this case, I'm going to select exporting it as a data, as a data set in our project. We'll click on export. We'll get the system message that our data is being exported. We can view the details of the process here. It is, we see that the export is in progress. And once it is finished, we'll be able to view the exported data set with the predictions. The export finished. We can see that it has been completed here. Now we can view the data set. We can see the preview. In the preview, we can see all of the features that were generated, as explained. And we can see the probabilities of about time, safe and too late. The next stage would be to go to our app again and demonstrate how we create a scheduled periodic prediction. So in our last step, we're going to demonstrate how to make scheduled periodic predictions. This is the recommended mode for working in a production setting. To do so, we go to make prediction and we select the second option and click continue. We reach a menu which is similar to the menu for the one of prediction. 
we have only one model to use so we select it and continue now we need to define the prediction input this is where it differs from the manual prediction when you work in a production environment we would like to connect to the da uh, database and then fetch updated data from specific tables such as the table for the subscription start and churn date the table for the service requests etc etc and for every time we fetch updated data with a schedule that we've created we can then create an updated prediction so we must specify our connection to the databases in our case we have a mysql database and i will configure the connection details for our data sets and once i finish i will resume the video as you can see i've connected to our database which is called pi exchange test we're connected i will continue to connect to the other tables as well now that I have defined all of my connections, I can proceed to define the output destination and create the schedule. Click on next. Again, defining the output destination is optional. We can create schedule periodic predictions and we can export them later on. So I'll proceed to define the schedule. The schedule is pretty straightforward. We define a period of time. For example, we would like to create a prediction every four weeks on Monday at 9 a.m. We can schedule the prediction and we'll see that nothing happened yet because it's not yet time for the prediction to run. If we decide that we do not want to wait, to wait until Monday in four weeks time, we can manually trigger a run or we can change the configuration or we can just go back to our main view and see we have a scheduled prediction which is scheduled to run every four weeks on Monday at 9 a.m. At this point we have finished covering the customer churn prediction template app. To conclude let me recap what I have shown today. I demonstrated a sample use case of a telco company that is interested in predicting the likelihood of churn for their customers. I described the data sets that the company has I showed how to create a subscription-based customer churn app. In the app, I demonstrated how to configure the various parameters such as churn period definition and the contributing factors definition. I've also shown how we build a predictive model using the template and specifically, how are the data processing pipelines built, what is the input of the predictive model, and what is the estimated performance of the model based on the test data that is the last 30 days of available data. Lastly, I demonstrated how to make predictions using the model we trained, one-off or scheduled, and how to consume these predictions by downloading the results or exporting them back onto the AI and analytics engine. So, if you're interested in trying this customer churn template for yourself, we do have a two-week free trial. We'll leave the link in the description box below. Thank you.